prayed for uh, LAX, PBCC, Film Week, and uh, from the LA Film Critics Association. And of course, it's a magnificent rating, Juliette Pinot. Um, that was just a sublime, that was a sublime <laughs> performance. And um, there's so much that I want to ask you about. But I want to start with the very last scene, because I think I watched that five times to try to make sense of it. It's this sort of coda, and it has this wonderful kind of pan, where you're talking about the seasons, and then it ends with on the two of them together. And she asks him, well, he quotes St. Augustine, and uh, she, she's asked him why he's always kept his desire for her, and he says something like, St. Augustine explains that the definition of happiness is always wanting more of what you have, something like that. Mm -hmm. And and she, she says, I want to ask you something. And she says, I, I never really possessed you, did I? And she says, I want to ask you something. Am I your cook or am I your wife? It's very important the way he answers that question. And a lot of takes a pause. And then you take a pause. And he says, you're my cook. And it's the right answer. Tell me what went through your mind and through Eugenie's mind in answering that question, because to me that gets to the heart of what this film is about, that cooking is an art, gastronomy is an art, and this relationship between the two of them is also about art and the love of art. Um, while we were shooting that scene, um, we, did, we did two takes, and both takes, uh, Benoit said, you're my wife because he couldn't say, you're my cook. So whom the director came to him and said, it's written cook, not wife. <laughs> and then he said, yes, but look at his, her eyes. You know, she's expecting me to say wife. <laughs> and then uh, I didn't say anything because I found it so interesting to see the dialogue between both. And finally, he was able to say cook, or because before that, who said, but look at her, she's waiting for you to say cook. She wants, she wants to be called cook. And, and I thought, I don't know about that, <laughs> you know? I would say both, you know, I would say both. Uh, but I find it interesting that in a man's mind, pleasing a woman would be called cook. I find it interesting mm -hmm. because we've been fighting to be called cook. Mm -hmm. And yet our heart wants to be both, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, the, in the game of being a woman. Right, right. Tell me a little bit about the relationship between the two of them and the dynamic, because they do share this incredible love of gastronomy, and that is the thing that unites them um, and sort of drives their passion over all these years. Um, she at one point says, after he's asked her to marry him for the umpteenth time, and she has agreed, she says, I think we are in the, he says, like, we're in the autumn of our lives. And she says, no, we're in the summer. Tell me about that. I think we always, in all the seasons, but choosing warmth and shine and brightness and you know, the, the emergence of life is, is a good choice. <laughs> Even though we go through all the seasons, um, I'm a sort of optimistic kind of mind. Uh, that's part of, uh, you know, I was born like that. That's what my mother used to tell me. But I understand the feeling of being in the autumn feeling as well. Um, you know, the relationship between Duda and her um, they complete each other. Mm -hmm. He has this, you know, idea about the recipe, like uh, humming the, you know, something that might be, and you know, to the, the combination of the textures of those tastes, smells, you know, it, he has an idea, like a director has an idea in the script, you know, he writes it down. And then us as actors, we make it real, we make it truthful, we make it alive. And the cook I'm playing makes it incarnated into 
a reality, which is, you know, the, the cooking. So I always like this analogy between the director and actor and this, you know, conceptor, the chef, conceptor of a, a recipe, and, and she's making it real. Do you think that she takes as much pleasure from him as he takes from her, or is it that she takes pleasure from his love of her, of her cooking? Because we never see her going to him, we only see him going to her. Yeah, because uh, he has to descend to her. <laughs> um, I don't know, for her, I think the pleasure is to, is to in giving, mm -hmm. uh, is to in, in excelling in something she can forget herself. Right? And I, I believe in acting is very much that, <laughs> is that the more you give, the more you forget about yourself and the, the best you feel at the end of the game. Because there's uh, a, an idea of forgetting yourself is the best, mm -hmm. you know, because you go into another layer of humanity and it becomes some, um, you have wings somehow, you know, you go really into another world. And so uh, I think in the way my character is cooking has to do with, you know, being in the matter, being in the, the making, the creation, more than, you know, trying to gain something out of him. Yeah. I think it's about, you know, you're so taken and you need to be there. She doesn't need to be with a man eating and sitting down, and, you know, but she needs to be doing, um, yeah, to, and even to exhaustion. <laughs> because there's no limit when you're passionate about something. You just give yourself until the end. And that's what's heartbreaking in this character is that she has to face the death and she's ignoring it. Or she takes it in in a certain way to uh, to excel in what she's you know her passion is. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about working with Benoit and working with Tana Home, the director, and working with Pierre Gagnier? How did that the cooking sequences happen? They look so authentic and like you can almost smell okay. smell taste. Yeah, yeah, whom the director really wanted us to have the, the experience of eating the best food we could. And with uh, Pierre Gagnier, it was quite easy to get that feeling. And so, because usually, as you know, when films, the food is kind of filmy food, it looks kind of good, but it's not that great. <laughs> and like go and all people saying, pretending it's great. And in this one, whom really wanted us to, uh, to experience the the best we could, and we did. But, you know, synchronizing the, the food being ready, the camera being ready, actors being ready, it was kind of a, um, a magic turn to, to have all of it together, but it did happen. And it must have taken an incredible choreography to, oh, yes. to she does, yeah. The thing is, Benoit is a very good cook, probably better than me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm um, used to cook because I have kids, and that's what you learn doing when you have kids and you, you have a life. So it was not that difficult to go into the gestures and all that. The choreography, we just had needed to know that the camera needed to be enough time there. And so there was more about a ballet, like a painting, really. Mm. Uh, the, the, the camera being more of a rush than a, a just a camera. So it was. Um, we, we had a day to rehearse that, and then uh, came down the, you know, the, the shooting day, and it was just uh, making sure that the dish tiles were in the right place, because I didn't want to burn my fingers or hurt someone else. Someone, someone else. So the dish tiles was really the way to do this. <laughs> what about your process? What was the process like on this, on this film? How involved were you with the planning? Um, I sometimes like to work with um, my acting coach, uh, Susan Batson. I don't know if you know her, but she's quite excellent. But on this one, I didn't want to. Um, it's, um, I think I had enough, you know, in me. Uh, and um, 
and also knowing Benoit, you, we have a daughter in common, so uh, there's a little bit of past in between us, even though we, we, didn't, uh, we didn't work together for 25 years. So uh, we just jumped into it. Uh, um, of course you can hear, of course you uh, imagine and you know, get it inside in a, in a finding the root to your character. But in a, you know, while you're shooting, you can revealed by the presence of the actor, by the camera movement or the, where it is, and, and whose presence as well, and the food as well. We had an amazing prop uh, crew, uh, a, a couple of pe people, just fantastic, putting all the bouquet together and the, the, the candles, lighting the candles, and you know, running around to bring the flavors, and, it was quite amazing to see that. Yeah, I really felt for them. We were running like crazy. Yeah. Nice. You know, this is not the first time you've participated in a movie about food. This is the inevitable question. Something years ago, vegetable was much beloved in this country, and was about food as a very different experience, sort of food as almost a form of protest or self-expression, I suppose. Um, can you, I know they're so different, but can you compare at all? Um, I like eating. <laughs> so I read the scripts quite quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the expression of life. It's the expression of the first need, you know, eating. And, and uh, it gives warmth and it gives appreciation of what's given to us. Uh, from the planet. It's, uh, we have a very generous planet. And so uh, it's a way also to uh, transform um, uh, matter into something else, into art. Uh, you know, that matter is not just matter. Matter is, you can lift matter into another place. And, and that's why, you know, the, the parallel between making love or touching someone and, and, and the food is, is uh, it has some link because uh, it's uh, it's loving each other and loving what we have and lifting it into a, a special place. It's uh, it's our choice. Mm. Mm. This is a, um, is it time to open it up, or do we want to? Yes. Okay. We will open it up for questions. I would like to know. How it was working with your ex-husband? Was it easy? Or? Um, did you hear the question? Yeah. The question yes. was, what was it like to work with your ex? <coughs> um, I thought it was going to be complicated, <laughs> and I was a little fearful, I have to say, uh, because he was asked to play this film like two months before we started shooting, so very late. And, and I thought he was going to say no. <laughs> and I was surprised he said yes. So um, the first um, rehearsal day, he, because he loves cooking so much, he was cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking. He said, yeah, you can do this, you can do that. Yeah, I'm ready, yeah, do it, do it. And at the end of the day, I say, boom, I'm not the cook anymore. When I die, he doesn't need me anymore. And so he thought, oh. Yeah, <laughs> and so Benoit was a little taken aback that he had to withdraw a little bit with a cooking moment, especially at the beginning because his time of cooking came later when he invited me to, uh, you know, to be his uh, host. And so we had to adapt a little bit with that his need of cooking, which uh, I totally understand. Um, but you know, you can see in the film that we really got along. Yeah, it was uh, it was a nice way to reconcile in a way, and a, a perfect gift for our child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think the French don't in general have as many difficulties with that as we do. A lot of there's a lot of actor couples who do that continue to work together. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Oh, first of all, it's <coughs> extremely rare to get me to see a movie at ten in the morning. <laughs> when I heard you were going to be here, uh, I just adore your work. Oh. You, 
your acting is so exquisite, but I love the simplicity of it. Hmm. And especially in this film, but in all your work. I, Thank if you I can see that. anything you do, I will. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about one moment that was so moving in this film, and it was when you found the ring. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how was that moment played? Like, well, the, the... Was that discussed? Was that in the... I mean, obviously it was in the script, but... Well, who wanted us to be surprised every time we were eating some things, you see on our face, you know, what was happening. And actually the dessert came and we rehearsed the time of the dessert and I thought the plate was going to be empty so I could be, would shoot the surprise of the dessert. And actually in the rehearsal, they came with the real, with the real dessert. And I said, you must be kidding me. We've been telling, saying that, and work that I was supposed to see it for the first time. So I said to him, it's never going to work. You're never going to have the first kind of surprise thing. And he's, he didn't say anything, actually. And uh, this is not working? Oh, OK. Yeah. It's not an ice cream. <laughs> is it working? Yeah. 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 And, um, and so what was the saying? Um, and so they came, okay, we shut that, and then I thought it's gonna be the, the same thing about the ring, you know, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna be surprised. And actually, I was surprised to be surprised, <laughs> you know, it just happened like that. Uh, it was a beautiful moment. Thank you very much. Yeah. In each film, an actor learns something. What did you learn doing this film to take away from a soul level of your, just your person? Mm. Um, that it's always possible to reconcile mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day love is the most important mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's important to reconcile before going away into other spaces <laughs> you know it's uh, it, and you have if you have the possibility of doing it and especially in an art form you know I think it's uh, it really heals the, 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 the heart and, and, and the air yeah, because you two work so beautifully together, is there, and having, having done this project, would you be actively looking to work with Benoit again in the future, or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Good to know. <laughs> How did you memorize uh, which food went with what? I mean, that was like... That's what we do as actors. I know, <laughs> it was so complicated. We kind of remember things, but... Um, <laughs> I don't know because of the necessity. When you understand why you're doing this, yeah, then suddenly it it, it stays in you. You know, the memory is is in you. Uh, but who kept asking me, smile, smile, smile? Because I forgot. You know, I mean, into the thing, and I'm I'm being serious because I'm I'm too serious somehow. And so he, he wanted me to uh, to be this Eugenie, being this yeah, so this scientific look that she has. Yes, all, yeah. all she's yeah, it like she's just in her zone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, like in Chocolat, I noticed that you were able to transmit the, uh, the feeling of what was happening into the audience. Uh, you did the same thing in this film uh, because toward the end, you guys were a perfect couple uh, and you know each other so well, so you were able to actually transmit that energy because they're at toward the end of the movie and you're speaking to each other, you feel like the emotions that you translate, you're there to actually, you begin to like cry. And you're trying to, I think the audience was crying as well. I heard everybody like- How can you eyes. see them? Because, uh, I could hear them. I could hear the sniffing, the, the, you know that sound. Um, how was it for you to create that emotion? I mean, you're, it's, it's your magic. You're able to transmit that energy, that, that feeling. And when you're able to do that, you get the audience. You, you, you got what you were looking for. Uh, because I felt it. It was amazing. Hmm. But, I mean, there's part of yourself while acting that is um, very, very internal and very personal and, and you work in to out out to in but mostly into out um, but of course you know directors think that you're doing the film for them 
and producers think that you're doing the film for the hand. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, as an actor, you're doing it for humanity because that's what it's for. Uh, and, and maybe at the beginning of your career, you're thinking for yourself, you know, you're doing it for yourself or for your mom or father or family or whatever. But there's a moment it becomes something else because you've done, you've done all the chapters, the first chapters of, uh, of the needs, if I may say. But definitely there's a, there's a need to tell the story that is beyond yourself and that stays. But you cannot push it. It's more inviting people in more than trying to force something. And that's the equilibrium you've got to find in th so people can feel it enough uh, in the emotion because if it's too retreat nobody's going to feel anything mm -hmm. and yet not not too much so they have the audience has the space to choose what they want to feel mm -hmm. that's why I love the fact there's no music because it doesn't yeah. tell you what to feel mm -hmm. it doesn't drive you where it needs to you, you know for you mm -hmm. to think or feel and, mm -hmm. and uh, I like that I like mm -hmm. the freedom that's given to the audience uh, like in life you know, you, you need to be free in order to choose really what you want, what you need, what you, yeah, you, yeah. For a film that doesn't have a musical soundtrack, this is one of the most musical films mm -hmm. that you can think of because you have this incredible sound design with all the pots and the pans and, the, and then the camera feels very musical as well. And it's the whole thing feels, you, you don't notice that there's no music, which is kind of amazing. and uh, intuition. Uh, I feel that your work is always very textured. And um, since this character is very professional and skilled person, and my first question will be, what did you prepare for, um, for this kind of uh, very professional character? And also, do you have something specific about going into the performance to be really um, be able to open and, and get the texture uh, out of and just forget about all this pre preparation. Um, I've done period films, so I have that in me somehow. Uh, and it's not I, I don't think it's that far away from who we are. <laughs> I, I try to make it less of what we think it is. Um, because when you see films, very early on films, you know, pictures, they're very kind of reach, it feels very reachful. It, I mean, it depends where, but, you know, being in the countryside in the, in the west of France and all that, it felt like it needed to be, but yet this character I'm playing is very sophisticated in a way because the way she speaks is not like everyday basic way of speaking. And I, I said to whom, this is a strange character because she is, there's a simplicity in her, she's a cook, but yet there's a sophistication. And, uh, but I like a contradictory kind of thing and I, I tried to play with it, but you know, it was not that premeditated. It's, I just went with my heart, with what I know of, you know, this period of time, I did a little bit of research, you know, on the internet, but not like reading five books. Uh, I, I just, um, um, I spent enough time in, the, in cooking, you know, in my kitchen to know, you know, the rhythm of things and the love of it. And because I've been, you know, like picking up, you know, veggies from the, the garden is something I, I in my Parisian, you know, uh, where I live, I go to the market and I speak with a, with a uh, farmers because that, that I love doing it and I've done I've done that since I was a teenager because my mother used to do that mm -hmm. so it's a natural thing for me to be related to earth and and um, so it felt genuine in my in you know uh, for this film even though I I think I included this sophistication somehow you know in the way of um, of speaking and 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 being with a uh, 
with Doda, you know, Benoit's character. She has, she's, she's having this kind of a um, distance because she needs the distance in order to be free and, and it makes the passion even, even stronger. And that's where to deal with, with uh, this relationship. I don't think she's forcing anything. It's the way she is and respecting what she feels. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, at a certain point, when she gets this ring, it's like, okay, a private moment where she's gonna give in for him because also she knows that she's fragile. Mm -hmm. She might go away. So I'm not sure I answered really your question because uh, there's, a, there's something about, um, I think acting as this is so magic. You have to be so, you have to be present in the present. That's the finding this kind of uh, over present moment in the present. That's for me acting is the, is really the excitement of it. Mm. Is how can I be here, so much here that is even, you know, um, unreal. <laughs> I don't know how to, to express that, but there's a, there's a, this joy of, of, of discovering the present time with the other actor and, and you know, the triangle with the DP, the DP, the director and the actors. I think this triangle is so, you know, that's really where the turmoil, you know, the circle creation is happening and it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. But my part is really being present. Thank you. I think we're, do we have time for one, one more? One more question. Thank you. Uh, hi, I just want to say your performance is always so real. It's so amazing and so present. Even walking with the vegetables and the thing, sometimes you see a performer and you say to yourself, that's not their everyday life. They don't. <laughs> but when, we, when I see you with those vegetables, and when I see you pour that liquid, you are so present. Mm -hmm. And my question is, do you tap into somebody you know or is it your experience is it your mother you tap into do you even do that at all when you do a film like this and when you go to work good question uh. <laughs> <laughs> i think it's the love of lifting yourself into a place that's called acting it's really a joy of meeting not me, but some, someone inside me <laughs> that is reaching humanity in a way. I think there's something around those lines that is happening uh, and being surprised by what's coming up. So I think sometimes to anticipate a little too much, you know, to the will is really a wall, I think, for actors sometimes. The will is really tricky because it, it takes you in places of your head or you know a premeditation of what needs to be done or, but you you have to have a certain will uh, you know before as you're working because that's part of you know is that's the the matter <laughs> of uh, you you need to have that energy to be able to do things but you have to let it go and trust that something else will come up and that's really the into the, the jumping into the unknown that is really so exciting because you don't know what's gonna happen and it's happening beyond yourself. And that's, for me, that's the magic of acting. And experience, when you're able to experience when the other actors or the directors let you, you know, live that, it's fantastic. But yeah, I think it's important to resist some of the, um, the expectations or you know, even sometimes uh, the, the director's will. Uh, uh, twice, uh, Hoon came to me and said, can you play neutral? <laughs> At a moment where it was very, you know, I was like eating the soup and, you know, and I was saying to uh, Duda, you know, I can only thank you for everything. And it was a very emotional moment. And when he said to me, be neutral, I was like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like a slap in the face. It's like telling me I'm shit. You know? <laughs> and, and so I said to him, uh, I don't know how to play neutral. <laughs> it's a little cheeky, you know, because uh, I understand what he meant.
But I think I wanted to bring him something else, mm -hmm. which was feelings. Mm -hmm. And not being frightened of having feelings. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think because I saw his film uh, before, the, it was called um, uh, well, uh, there was another film he's made before in, in France. And I could see that the, the, the story was just beautiful. But the, there was a very neutral uh, way of acting of, of all the actors. He brought something. But I thought inside me, secretly, I will bring him and his movie feelings and whispering. So, uh, you know, when I said, I don't know how to do that, of course, you know, it was stunning and <laughs> didn't reply, you know. And, and then uh, at the end of, after a few takes, uh, he, he tapped on my shoulder and said, I, I think he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's great advice. I love that story. Sometimes you know even a little better than that. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all so much.